Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, and thank you to those for joining us today for the Dispensing Optician Committee. Um, first, just you know, asking all committee members just to make sure that your devices are muted. And as a quick reminder, and as the um, the moderator had already told us, uh, there will be a time for public comment, and then I'll be asking for public comment on each of the agenda items. And with that, I'll call the Dispensing Optician Committee of the State Board of Optometry to order, and I will now call roll. So first, Anna, you're first on the list. Are you here? I'm here. Awesome. And Bill? I'm here. Awesome. Um, so with that, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and move on to agenda item number two, which will be public comment. Um, so now what we'll do is we will open up the chat feature for members of the public to request time to speak on any of the items not agendized for today. And then comments will not be read from the chat feature. So please type that you would like to speak and then our facilitators will open the mics in the order of the request. And then I'll remind, uh, remind fellow committee members that we may not comment on these items, but we may indicate it, uh, to staff if we should agendize the matter for a future meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is the moderator, and at your direction, I have opened up the question and answer panel. Members of the public, if you would like to make a comment, please type, I would like to make a comment and submit it to all panelists. If you do not see the Q&A panel, please click on the question mark within a square at the bottom middle of your screen. We are displaying directions for your reference and we will give you a moment to access this feature. Thank you. This is the moderator and Mr. Chair, there are no requests for public comment at this time. Would you like me to close the Q&A panel? Yes, please. Thank you, I will do so. Okay, thanks. And now we'll move on to agenda item number three, which is discussing the possible action on the recommendation to the board regarding which board members should be appointed to serve on the committee. Um, so, with that, what I can do is I, I'll open it up to discussion. Um, if Bill and Anna, if, uh, I would love for it to hear from both of you, if you've come prepared with uh, suggestions or discussion around which um, the board member that you would like to recommend uh, being on the committee. So I can start with Anna. Hi. Um, so I was looking over everything and I said my first choice would be Maria. Okay. And Anna, would you have a second pick by chance? Uh, yeah. Um, it's kind of tied, honestly. Um, or Sid, <laughs> or Sid uh, and Deborah. Okay. So we have um, Dr. McIntyre, correct? Yes. And then Maria, Mrs. Grover. Okay. And then, and Bill, we'll hear from you. So I have, um, my recommendation is not so much for, an, for individual members. I just kind of have a philosoph philosophical point that I think that, Number one, this is, of course, all within the purview of the Board of Optometry to appoint whoever they want. That being said, I think it's probably best that a professional rather than public member be appointed from that committee or from, from that board onto our committee. Uh, and I also think that that professional member should be the dispensing optician member, which I understand is vacant. Um, and I think that makes the most sense for the structure of the, of the work we do. And so, um, 
changed. So as I was thinking about it, really, I just like a caretaker so it's easier for us to get a quorum until the dispensing optician members appointed. And then I think they should have replaced their member with that person on our board, if that makes sense. So that's my 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 philosophical uh, perspective. Of course, I think um, uh, everybody is is um, is well suited for it because of all the people in California, uh, 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 those board members. You know, the 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 list we got of the active board members are probably the the seven most qualified people or seven of the most qualified people who could be on it, any one of them, because they understand the context of our discussions. So yeah. in terms of the which one, less important to me. Philosophically, yeah, Bill, I think it should be a professional member. Yeah, and Bill, I completely agree with you. I, my two picks were going to be professional members as well. Um, and because I had uh, on my list was going to be Dr. Kawaguchi and Dr. Turetsky. And the reasoning behind that is because, one, they're both optometrists, so I think they're going to have the most insight into uh, what we're discussing. And the other two reasons why I chose those two was also that they've had a, long, a, a longer relationship with RDOs, um, with their backgrounds. So I was reading about, you know, who, who, who they have worked with. And a lot of them can be are our relationships with RDOs. So Anna, like I agree that you know you do have a professional member, and I do agree with that. But I didn't know if you two how you two felt about that as well. But specifically, their their relationships um, previously seem to have a closer tie to RDOs and dispensing opticians. Mr. Chair, if I might add, it's Char Murphy, Executive Officer. Um, I don't want to prohibit the discussion, but I think that it also might be a good idea to consider making two suggestions or two recommendations. Um, they could be ranked by choice, um, and um, I think that we'll, we'll, we'll look for help from legal on our motion, but certainly I, I believe that the President intends to reevaluate the appointment once uh, a new appointee who is a registered licensee of opticianry is appointed to the board. I apologize, let me make sure I understood. I say that last part one more time with the registered dispensing optician. Yes, once there is a registered dispensing optician or spectacle lens dispenser, contact lens dispenser appointed to the board, it is the intention of the uh, president to reevaluate the board's appointment to the dispensing optician committee. And I think would certainly take uh, the comments of this committee that uh, a licensee would be um, a, a perfect fit for a board appointee to this committee. Okay. Yeah, I 100% mean, agree. I would love to have uh, another optician uh, sitting with right. this decision right now. Are we looking at a temporary um, person to, or a temporary board member to sit on the committee until we have that spot filled? So I think that that's this, this is, you can go ahead, Shara, but I was going to jump in. This is Will from Legal. Go ahead first, Sean. Yeah, that is the intention of the president. So in my conversations with him, um, he would like to make sure that the issues of the dispensing optician committee continue to be raised to the board, um, that uh, there is an advocate for the decisions that are made um, in the committee. Uh, and of course, you know, not knowing exactly the appointment length of appointment process, um, making sure that that continues until the governor does make an appointment of, of a registered optician to the board. Okay. Yeah. So this is Will, um, board council, and I was just going to let you guys know in um, this this uh, committee, unlike many committees, is um, in statute, so it has specific rules on a lot of these things that are, you know, set by the legislature, and it talks about here in subdivision E of uh, Business and Professions Code 3020 that committee members shall serve a term of four years, except for the initial staggered term which um, we're already uh, passed. So if we're, if someone is um, appointed by the board on your recommendation or otherwise, um, it sounds like they shall serve a four-year term. Now, you know, of course, someone could on their own voluntarily resign or something like that, but um, this year's kind of, it, it doesn't give you a natural vacancy 
um, in this role for another four years. So I want you guys to keep that in mind as you're considering um, this sort of temporary appointment you're considering. Uh, hey, Will, this is Bill. Can, can you, uh, what's the section on the, um, the appointing of the professional member uh, from the, um, from, or not the professional member, the board member, right? So, so in addition to the public and professional members on the board, on the committee, which the board initially appointed, the board was also instructed to um, appoint one of its own members to serve on that committee. Um, is that by statute as well? Um, I, I'm not sure I follow the question exactly, but are you asking if it's by statute that the this process that we're discussing here today that, or are you talking about the governor appointing um, an RDO to the board of optometry? No, I'm, I'm talking about the, our, our process today. So okay. the president and the board have asked for our recommendation on this, but um, it's my understanding that the, because it's a working committee, um, the governor doesn't choose the chair of the committee, for example, in any event, and I, I, I thought the governor did not choose who the board chose to sit on this committee, even after That's, the stagger. Uh, correct. You, you're correct that the governor doesn't, is not choosing the board member who's going to serve on the committee. The board is going to choose the board member to serve on the committee upon this committee's recommendation. So that's what we're considering here today. I'm just right. reading a subs in Business and Professions Code 3020, which is the establishment of the dispensing optician committee and recommendations regarding regulation of dispensing opticians. Subsection E, um, it states that the committee shall submit a recommendation to the board regarding which board member should be appointed to serve on the committee and the board shall appoint the member to serve. Committee members, so all committee members, shall serve a term of four years, except for the initial staggered terms. And a member may be reappointed, but no person shall serve as a member of the committee for more than two consecutive terms. So I guess this is a long way of saying what, what you guys were uh, hinting at or, or considering of, of a temporary position and then someone else slotting in Soon, when when the governor makes additional appointments to the board, the whole board, um, it doesn't sound like that would be uh, strictly allowed under under the law. Um, so I just wanted you to caution that kind of who we recommend here might might be on our our committee for four years. Well, right. I, I, so, before we can move forward, I, I I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Casella. Before we move forward, um, I, I want to be really clear about this reading. Um, because I, I understand what you're saying, committee members shall serve a term of four years, but if the committee recommends, submits a recommendation for additional or another appointment, I, I don't think that's precluded here. I just want to make sure that we're very clear and very certain about our reading of the law before we make a determination that ties the hands of this committee to potentially appoint new members once those are I mean, once those are appointed by the governor to the board. Well, that is how I, I read it. Um, I hadn't, we hadn't, you know, looked at this question in detail prior to this meeting. I'm just looking at it as I read it now. So, you know, we can go back and try to try to do some more research and figure out some other work or something, but that is the plain language of the statute. I don't think that the four year term that it talks about here would be interrupted by, by anything other than the passage of time. So then it would seem from that that if the board were to appoint a member who only has two years, then there isn't an appointment. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just concerned that this has implications that mm -hmm. aren't logical. Well, if, you, if someone is termed out on the board, for example, 
and they're also a committee member, um, and they're they're the board member who's serving as a committee member, then there would be a, a vacancy, like I kind of alluded to, if there was some sort of vacancy, then you would have another opportunity to recommend a board member be appointed. Even though the statute, the plain language says that once they're appointed to the committee, they serve, it's a four-year term. Well, I think that if they no longer meet the prerequisite qualification of being a member, then they would not be qualified to be a committee member, a board committee member, if you will. Right. So uh, this, this interpretation uh, kind of changes my philosophical recommendation so that we don't paint ourselves into a hole. And now I recommend that we um, that we suggest that the board appoints um, the board president because he will then have the wherewithal to step down once the dispensing optician member is appointed. We know philosophically that he says he wants to reconsider it when that person's appointed. So um, the only way to do that is for to create the vacancy when that person gets appointed. And the, the most assured way for that to happen would be to appoint Mark. And so he could then just step down. And, and if he doesn't and people fear he's consolidating too much power, then the board can choose to elect a new president. I'm still having concern, Will, with, with this reading. Um, I think that uh, what that third clause really modifies is the initial appointments made by the or after the initial appointments, it's those appointments made by the governor, that those will serve for four years. I, I'm just, I, I'm having trouble um, assuming that the term is set by that third clause, and I just I um I, I I have some real concern that that is too strict a reading of what we have here. Okay, well I I hear your concern. I don't know what way you know if you have to propose some way around it or some other course of action because we don't have anything else before us other than this statute. There's no regulation and. Uh, I do see there's one one case. I'll, I'll quickly click on it and see if this case sheds any light, but I don't believe it does. 1978. That would deal with the medical board era in any event. Yeah, I, I think it's about a totally different matter, so I don't think it's helpful uh, to us here. What, what, uh, Will, what section is the, um, is that um, term you're reading from? It's Business and Professions Code Section 3020, subsection, subdivision E is an elephant. And we're looking at the third sentence, but you, you know, can read it in all sentences. So, Charlotte, what you're asking or, you know, arguing is that the four-year term sentence refers only to members other than the board-appointed member? Correct. To the members of the committee that are appointed by the governor. Well, as a, the first sentence of E says, after the initial appointment by the board, Pursuant to subdivision A, the governor shall appoint the register and dispensing optician members and public members. The committee shall submit a recommendation to the board regarding which board member should be appointed to serve on the committee. 
and the board shall appoint a member to serve. So that those two sentences cover all five members. The first sentence covering the first four members, and the second sentence covering the fifth member. And then the third sentence says committee members shall serve a term of four years, except for the initial staggered term. So you know, with without any other committee members, committee members other, I think then committee members, I think then what we're looking at. Um, in order to sort of just to, to bring this back in, um, looking at your recommendations, uh, a professional member, um, if we're looking at someone who does not have a long standing term, then we would have either Dr. Kawaguchi or Dr. McIntyre, as Dr. Kawaguchi's term runs to 2022 and Dr. McIntyre's term runs to 2021. Uh, also, Dr. Turetsky's term runs through 2021. But it, it seems to me, I, I, Shara, I tend to agree with you that it seems ludicrous. Let's say if it was possible that Glenn got reappointed in 2022, that the then board couldn't say, oh, we want to reconsider who our representative on that committee is, but a previous version of the board had appointed you, Glenn, and now once we appointed you, you're there for four years. And since the governor continued your term, we're stuck with you for another two years on the committee, even though we want to rotate somebody else in on that. You know, everything else about the committee structure seemed to be, when I was on the board, it was, you know, within the president's purview of, of like who sits on the committees. I understand this is different because uh, this is for the fifth member of the statutory created um, committee, but it seems, it does seem odd that, that it's a four-year term and they could, oh, um, was Ruby on the, this board for four years? Have we existed for four years? Because maybe it's just filling the the her vacancy, and it's just to the end of of like if she was only on for two years, then it'd only be a two year appointment because it'd be continuing her initial. I don't know. Maybe I'm grabbing at straws. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm not sure how the board, how the committee would like to move forward. Um, yeah, I guess this is above me as well. Or beyond. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think from this point, obviously, I think we have established that we. Um, uh, hang on, hang on. Uh, I have a question for Will, and that's the meaning of E, like elephant, of 3020. Okay. 3A says the governor shall appoint the dispensing optician members. Oh, but this isn't a dispensing optician member. It's the board's representative. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Uh, you know, one possibility here is you know you guys can consider your your preferences in light of in light of all the different factors that you've discussed. And you know, make a recommendation to the board, and, and ultimately, you know, there'll be further conversations. There'll be further opportunity to discuss this in a public uh, forum because they'll have to, you know, adopt it at the next public meeting. Um, so it's it's just a recommendation at this point. So just just to throw it out there, you want to? Because honestly, Bill, even like I think we've established. I'd love to hear from Anna your thoughts about. How we I know we definitely feel like Bill and I have both expressed that we are 
leaning more towards a professional member. Anna, would you agree with that as well? Do you have an opinion on that? Um, I do agree that we need a professional member. Okay. But I was basing it on those who are on the board, and um, until we have those other individuals, my pick is maybe because just looking at the dynamics um, I just wanted like a perspective, just to make sure we cover all bases. And uh, now, ideally, it would be great, especially because you know, everything's so now, and having different opinions would really help us to kind of see everyone's side and things. Anna, I was having I was having issues with your audio. I'm not sure if anyone else was, but I didn't really catch a lot of what you said, unfortunately. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, let's see. Anna, I, I'm gonna mute myself so that you're the only one unmuted and try again. Oh, okay. I hope I can remember. <laughs> um, I said that. For me, I do agree that we need a professional member. Um, I base my decision based on those who are currently sitting on the board um, for right now until we actually have the other individuals um, appointed. And you know, I think it's important just to have a well-rounded group in terms of when it comes to making decisions um, for opticians and making recommendations. Um, but like I said, I, I mainly picked mine just because I'm thinking of um, all the things that we were planning, which is all the outreach. Um, and I think that was the biggest thing is the outreach. And I think Bill had asked how long has the DOC been in place, and I believe it was 2017. Um, so because I believe I was appointed the year that everything got put into place. Um, but yeah, that's my perspective. Thanks. And then, and your professional member suggestion was Dr. McIntyre, correct? For the professional, yes. Yeah. And Bill, can I challenge you? Is if you were to have a suggested um, professional member that's currently on the board? Would there be one name that you would suggest, or would you just leave it open to professional member? Leave it a little more broad. Um, I don't. I don't have a a particular name. I think any of the professional members um, would uh, bring the necessary uh, uh, perspective. And as we talked it through. Um, you know, if if we get stuck with that person for three years or two years or however long it is, um, I think that's fine. I think that's fine as well. Um, okay. I'm not so bent on the idea that they that it must be the dispensing optician member who might not get appointed for three years. Who knows? Um, and so. Um, so I would say, and I would, I would just say that um, if you two agree on somebody, I'm all uh, uh, for, you know, saying that's the recommendation. Um, that, and you could say that one member just wanted a professional member. Yeah, um, and then um, Shara, I know you had asked for two recommendations. So my professional member recommendation. Um, was going to be Dr. Kawaguchi. So if that feels good with you, Bill, um, and I know Anna has recommended Dr. McIntyre for us to make our recommendations for Dr. McIntyre or Dr. Kawaguchi. Anna and Bill, do you feel good about that? Yeah, so I, I think that's fine. I think, by the way, the, the ultimate decider is going to be whoever raises their hand when they ask when the president asked, does anybody volunteer to be on the committee? Um, <laughs> uh, that, you know, I don't know the, the interest of, um, of, you know, of the members that we're going to suggest. 
So, um, yeah. but I think that's ultimately, you know, I'd rather have, um, you know, any doctor who wants to be on it than somebody who's dragged on it, if you know what I mean. Oh, 100%. And then also, I think from like my perspective, as I shared first, when I first spoke was that whenever I was looking at it, I was also looking for a professional member that had a closer relationship with like RDOs and licensees within the, or registrants within the states. So one of the reasons why I had um, nominated Dr. Kawaguchi was because he's, uh, or they've had a very close relationship, uh, looks like with RDOs in the past. Um, so that would be my personal opinion. Um, but so I guess Shara, our recommendations would be uh, both Dr. Kawaguchi and Dr. Um, McIntyre. Great. So we'll need a board member to make a motion uh, for those um, a, those recommendations to go to the board, um, and then we'll need a second in the vote. Okay. Okay. There... I move. I move that the committee recommends Drs. Kawaguchi and McIntyre for the vacant position on the DOC um, uh, and in any event recommends that uh, the uh, member representing the Board of Optometry on the DOC be a professional member. Anna, do you second? Second. Was that a yes? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. And we'll go and take a vote. I'll say Better do the public comment first. Oh, I'm so sorry. Forgive me for that. Um, yeah, so we'll uh, actually open the chat box again, the uh, feature, so that I can have the moderator open that up for public comment before we call a vote. Um, so any members of the public would like to speak on this agenda item. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I've opened up the question and answer panel. Uh, for those members of the public that would like to make a comment, please type, I would like to make a comment and send it to all panelists using the field in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. If you do not see the field, please click on the question mark within a box at the bottom middle of your screen. We are displaying instructions for your reference and we'll give you a moment to access the feature. This is the moderator, and Mr. Chair, there are no requests for public comment at this time. Would you like me to close the Q&A panel? Oh, I'm sorry. I was muted. Uh, yes, please. All right. I will do so. Thank you. It's been closed. Okay. Thanks. And with no public comment, I'll um, call a vote. Uh, so, Bill? Aye. Anna. Aye. And myself will be aye. Okay. And that actually was our own one and only agenda item to discuss today. So now we'll talk, uh, go um, on to agenda item number four, which will be future agenda items. If there are any um, future agenda items the committee would like to consider? Anna? I don't have anything. Okay. Bill? No, that's it. Thank you. Okay, thanks. And then, uh, and just correct me if I'm wrong, we'll open it up to the public for any comments on future agenda items? Yep, just in case. Okay. Moderator? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, uh, this is the moderator. I have opened up the question and answer feature. If you'd like to make a public comment, uh, please type. I would like to make a comment in the lower right-hand corner of your screen and submit it to all panelists. If you do not see this feature, please click on the question mark within a box at the lower bottom middle of your screen. We are displaying instructions for your reference and we'll give you a moment to access the feature.
this is the moderator. And Mr. Chair, I am seeing no request for public comment. Would you like me to close the Q&A panel? Yes, please. Thank you. I will do so. Okay. With no public comment, we'll move on to the last item, which is adjournments. So we will um, adjourn the meeting for the dispensing optician committee of the California State Board of Optometry. So I, I appreciate all the members of the public that were able to join and all the comments from the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank all you, right. uh, committee members, for your attendance. Thank you. Thanks.